So Notion just rewired how databases actually work and it changes the way you'll build every system from now on. They've brought in a clear distinction between the source, the views and the database itself. And for anyone building a Notion system, this means updating their approach to database creation. Let me explain what this means and why they did this. So for a Notion database to click, it's got to look clean, make sense logically and have a structure underneath that actually supports it. A database architects call this as a three tier structure, the presentation layer, the logic layer and the data layer. It's basically the gold standard that's been around for many years. In Notion though, all of these three layers were mashed together. The data, the views, and even the filters all lived inside of the same database block, which basically meant if you deleted the database, poof, you lost the data, the views, the filters, everything in one shot. When linked databases came along, things got much safer. You had one main database with the data and then you could make linked views for how it looked. So even if you deleted a view by mistake, your data was still safe. The problem though was that all your source databases just stacked one under the other. You had to scroll forever, which got really annoying when you were building a big system for work or even just for yourself. Now with this update, Notion split things out. The data now lives in what they call as a data source. That source could be standalone or tied to a view. And because of this new layer between the database and the source, a single database can now hold multiple sources, multiple views, or a mix of both. That means that you can now keep multiple original sources as tabs inside one database without all this endless scrolling. Okay, here's an example to show you exactly what I mean. Let's create a database source for tasks. Just type slash and add an inline database. And that's your tasks database. To confirm it, click into settings and you check the source. That's where you'll see the data source settings. Now right next to the task view, click the plus sign to add a new view. This time you'll notice a new option, add a data source, not just another view. Pick that and add a project source. In the task source, I've added a few quick properties, the date, status, a relation that links to projects, a formula, and that formula pulls all the client names from the project database. In the project source, I've added a select, a date, a client, the two-way relation back to tasks, and a formula that counts the number of tasks in each project. By default, each source comes with a table view, but you can see that you can now add two different sources into the same database, which wasn't possible earlier. You could delete the view and keep that source hidden, but it's usually easier to leave it there making editing and creating new stuff simpler when you do that later. The data source is basically the backend. That's where all the properties, all the formulae, automations, and configurations live. Things like subtask management, dependencies, page layouts, and even how tasks show up in the Notion calendar. And now let's switch over and look at the front end. For this example, let's say we work on projects with two clients, client A and client B. We'll demonstrate how to set things up for client A. Client B will follow a similar setup. For the client A's database setup, we'll create multiple views, a table, a board, a timeline view, a calendar view, a list view, and a feed view. But all of these are filtered specifically for client A. It's better to set up these views linked back to each source separately. If you want to create a set of task views, establish them as a separate database from your project views. Now to illustrate, I've set up projects for client A and the source that's mentioned as database projects and it'll set this up as a linked view automatically. So now you have the freedom to delete any of these views without affecting the underlying data. Previously, you had to manually create linked databases, but now simply defining the source automatically creates it as a linked view. When Notion updates one or more views, you can add that view to the linked database. If they add additional filter parameters, you can add these to the databases without having to go back to the source. 
So the front end remains segregated from the back end. If they add parameters to automations like formula based triggers, you can go back and make the modifications in the source then. To change a source in an existing database, go to settings, click manage database sources and then add linked database. You'll see two layers. Suggested shows database sources already used in this database, while existing data sources displays other data sources that are not used yet here. Alternatively, you can search for your data source directly from the link box. If you number your data sources sequentially and create a second brain that tracks these serial numbers, you can prefix each data source with its number. This allows for precise searching without confusion even when multiple data sources share the same name. If you try and create a linked view of a database, it's now aptly renamed as linked view of data sources. Each data source has a unique ID and you can see that by going into settings, manage data sources and clicking on the three dots and then copying the data source ID. You'll also notice that you can have the option to move the data source to another database table. So you can break away or include this into a database that already has multiple data sources. You can also move it to trash, allowing you to delete the data source completely. From the linked view, you have the ability to delete the view or if you decide to delete an original database source, it will give you two options, delete the view only or delete both the view and the data. Of course, you can also hit cancel to exit without making any changes. Now, due to this major change in the database architecture, Notion has released a new API. But if you use integrations with make.com, Zapier, N810, or any other similar platform, these connections may stop working if that particular developer hasn't updated to the latest Notion API. If you have existing integrations, I would consider holding this off on merging multiple data sources until your integration developer has updated to support the latest Notion API. Now, it's not a unified multi-source view yet, but it changes how systems can be built, meaning you can't see all the data from multiple databases into one database, even though all the properties could be the same. Now, that privilege is only given to the tasks database on the home page inside of Notion as of now. Secondly, it doesn't allow for conditional sharing of specific database sources, such as enabling a client to access only their own information within a data source that contains several clients information. Now, if you give permission through this share button, you're giving permissions at the database level, not at the source level. You can house both database sources and linked database sources inside of one database, erasing the distinction between both of them. Now, this architecture change will enable Notion to develop more sophisticated permissions, allowing users to access specific database properties or views rather than entire databases. And I believe this feature was released separately from permissions because of its complexity and significance, giving users time to understand and adapt to it before additional functionality is built on top of this.